Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. You've all heard of the man behind the plow, or of the man behind the gun. But have you ever heard of the man behind the frame? Well, if you haven't, you are right now. Because that's the title of our Let George Do It adventure. Now, one does not have to have a high IQ to figure out that the man behind the frame is not some small character who keeps that picture of Uncle Egbert hanging up over the fireplace. On the contrary, he's the kind of schmo who likes to have others fight his battles for him. And George Valentine is a fellow who is always ready to put on the gloves, with or without horseshoes. Now, it all started with a bunch of the boys getting together for a little ad-lib sing-fest, which is a pretty sour way to start anything. It's the best office machinery. Hold it, you guys. Shut up. Shut up, will ya? I'm trying to talk on the telephone. How can I... Ah, oh, that's better. Bunch of crazy banshees. Hello. Yes, yes, now I can hear you. Lawrence Ferguson? The kid? Well, sure he works for me. Came down from Emmitsville with me just yesterday. What did he do? Get high on too much soda pop? <laughs> oh, look, friend, whoever you are, I'm no nursemaid. Don't bother me with any of this. Shut up, you guys. He what? When? Where did he? Look, Lieutenant, for God's sakes, tell me. All right. Of course. County jail. I got it. Dear Mr. Valentine, my name's Vic Burnett, Federal Office Equipment Company. You remember, the guy sold you the wire recorder for your office. Well, I'll cancel out the last three payments on it if you come down fast to the county jail. I need help. A crazy rube I brought into town for a convention just so he could see the sights is now staring at the inside of a cell. He's been locked up for murder. I think that this uh, Mr. Burnett should have coached this young hothead on how to act before he brought him to town. You just don't go around killing people any more than you'd turn a deaf ear to this. Now let's see if George has gotten into the act yet. Oh, yes. I see he and Brooksy have just walked into Lieutenant Johnson's office. Okay, Mr. Burnett, But okay. I feel responsible for him. He's never been down here before. He's not even a salesman. You see, up in Emmitsville, you I You want have to this see him, kid... Valentiner, don't you? Just a minute, Lieutenant Johnson. He's never done anything but read comic books. But I can't let him get railroaded like a well, common... I'm sure every... he's not being railroaded for anything. And a woman is dead, isn't she? Miss Brooks, listen to me. This kid That's is absolutely... That's a good idea. You listen to him, Brooksy. Come on, Johnson. Gladly. Oh, Valentine, wait a I minute. I just want to hear it from the kid himself. That's all. What a job. My poor boy's in the hands of the law. <laughs> oh, well, that guy's just trying to help. I'm an old man. This guys like Burnett help me get that way. What's eating you? You'll see. Here. Through here. A woman was murdered, huh? Take it from there. Hotel apartment where she lived. Name was Sally Fife. High-speed typist. Hmm. <laughs> typist. Yeah, where'd he meet her? What happened? You'll see. Oh, look, Johnson. Blow on you... the side of the head with a bottle. Oh. Little party? Little gal about 35, fast talker, neat, clean, small business of her own that didn't amount to anything. Fight, sure, a fight of some kind. What else? This is a very refreshing original story. Why was the kid picked up? Were there witnesses? He was caught trying to run down a fire escape this morning. Taking us all day to even pry his name out of him. Well, I don't see He's 26. What... Skinny, sandy-haired, pimply-faced 26, and probably never earned more than 26 a week in his life, either. You see for yourself. Hey, wake up. Ferguson. Oh, excuse me. Hello, sir. Sure. I don't stand up. Just thought you were asleep. No, sir, I can't sleep. I just shut my eyes like that. I do it in the office sometimes so people don't know I'm thinking. Okay, I'm not sir. This is Mr. Valentine. Sure. How do you do, sir? 
Whatever you say. Yeah, honey. hello. Sit down, Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, you want to hear it, too, I guess. I don't feel very good, you know. Last night you had some drinks. Yeah. See, Mr. Valentine, I'm just a clerk in the office. Up in Emmitsville, I mean. Been there nine years. Uh -huh. I begged so many times to come to conventions of boss, it's Mr. Burnett. He, he Last finally... night you went to a movie and after that a bar called The Silver Duck and you had some drinks. Uh -huh. There was a banquet on the schedule, but of course, I'm not a regular salesman. I mean, just a clerk, you know. But I do handle the boss's correspondence and the district records and things. Well, I, I was alone last night. I don't know anybody in the city or anything. You know this woman, didn't you? This Sally Fife? No. What? No, I, I didn't. Not until then. In the bar, I mean. He met her there. Very refreshing. It's true, too. Go on. Well, I had several, I guess. You know how it is when a guy's alone. On the town, so to speak. I, I don't remember very well, but... I guess I met her. She was awful nice. Anyway, sometime later, I didn't feel very well. Yeah, sure. It was a long way back to the hotel, and she said she'd make me some coffee up at her place close by. But she was nice. I don't want you guys thinking anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know all about it. Tell them what happened when you got there. I've told you. I, I, I don't know. It's not clear. I'm not used to... I mean... I don't know whether I drank the coffee or not. All I know is that it's daylight and I'm asleep on the sofa. All right, hold it, kid, hold it. There was a fight, wasn't there? You had trouble with this oh, girl and then... stop it. Leave me alone. I... All right, I, I ran, sure. I ran. I, I tried to get out the fire escape, only my head was all dizzy. I would have got away if it hadn't been for that. That's this morning when they caught you. Get back to last night. Well... There she was... What do you think? I killed her. Oh, you did. Well, tell me about it. Refreshing original story. I don't know. I'll tell you what. I, I wanted to have excitement, what it feels like to be kicked around and yelled at by all them salesmen. A clerk, sure. He'll never get any place. Well, they're all fakes, all of them. Loud mouth jerks I could wrap around my finger any time you ask. Salesman. I'm better than any of them. Cut it out, kid. Now, easy. You said you killed a woman. <laughs> I must have. Don't you see? Nobody else was up there, I remember. <laughs> I'm sorry I shoot my mouth off, but I'm just trying to forget. I, I wish I was just being a clerk now. <laughs> uh, remember, forget. <laughs> it was her idea you have some coffee last night, I suppose. <laughs> well, it seems that way. It wasn't mine. How did you know? Oh, for the love of... Kid, haven't you ever heard of a thing like this happening to anybody besides you? What? Well, nobody ever got in trouble like this before. Nobody ever did the things that I must... Oh, cut it out, Rube. I can't stand it, eh? Yeah, the facts are all true, Valentine. The ones we could check. Same old story. What are you talking about? I'm just a guy who... Hasn't it ever occurred to you you might be a sucker? Oh, never mind, Johnson. Never mind. What's he held for? He signed a confession of anything? You think I take milk away from babies? Suspicion, that's all. Then how about taking him out of here? What's the name of that bar you said, uh, the Silver Duck? Come on, Lawrence. I want to see if you know how to swim. What's the idea, Mr. Valentine? This is where I was, all right, Relax, but I... relax. Nobody's noticing the handcuff. Yeah, but just to stand here all the time. Keep watching. <laughs> Neighborhood place, same people every night. It's about the same time now, too. The girl, Valentine. That's the part of it that doesn't fit. She wasn't the type. Wasn't a regular customer. Yeah, Johnson, it does. Fit. I'm just all mixed up. I want to go back Lawrence, to the... Lawrence, on your first night in the big city, how did you meet this Sally Fife? Uh, how about a demonstration? I want to see how a boy from the stick strikes up a conversation with a strange woman. Well, I, I know my way around. I, oh, no. I, I don't know. She said hello to him. What do you think? He probably blushed, too. Johnson, you contradict yourself. You said she wasn't quite the type. Brisk, sharp lady with a job. There's one. That guy. Huh? Which one? Point him out. There with a the cigar. Just came in. Oh, 
I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I must have seen all the people over here last night. I remember the waiters. Excuse me. Valentine, Lieutenant, wait. wake up. What's the most likely way the kid here met Sally Fife? Got picked for a patsy or whatever it was. Somebody probably introduced him, don't you think? So I'll see you later. Hello, friend. Huh? Uh, oh, excuse me. Just wondered if I could borrow your newspaper a minute. Hey, what kind of a cigar is that? Did you change, Loopy? 15, 20, 25. Okay, Jake, I'll see you. Wait a minute, friend. The newspaper? Help yourself. See you later, Jake. And sit still. Who are you picking the fifth? Must have hit it nice and fancy cigars, paying off your debt. I still got to figure out how you Hey, look go my arm, man. I want to ask the bartender, Jake, here about you. What do you want? He's all right, mister. Sit down, sit down. Name's Loopy, huh? What do you want? Turn around. That skinny young guy standing over there. Ever see him before? One next to the heavyset man? No. Hey, Jake, what do you let snoops like this in for? Loopy's all right, mister. Loopy, you haven't been dope on the races at Hialeah. Papers turn to the front page. News about a murder. And that kid's picture. So at least you've seen it before in the paper, haven't you? I didn't notice. Hey, what do you want? Here, Jake, here's my selections, all of them. I'm getting out of this. Sure, Loopy. Give me that. Hey, look out. Get your hands off I got him, so cool off. That other guy coming is a cop. I... I got nothing to be afraid of. Oh, no, no, no. Just wanted to get rid of these notes in your pocket. Only they're not all racing selections either, are they, Loopy? Hmm. Pawn ticket, huh? Mister, I told you, Loopy here's all right. What's going on, Valentine? I don't know, Johnson. Pawn ticket for a thousand bucks. What? Yeah. No wonder he pays his debts today. Smokes such fancy cigars. Now, look, Golly, I ain't got nothing to hide. I just been wondering what to do about it, that's all. I'm Loopy Fife. Huh? Fife, did you say? Sure. This tamer got killed, it's... Well, I've been wondering if I should volunteer as expert testimony or something. I mean, she's my wife. <laughs> Rhymes. Sally Fife, she's my wife. Well, how do you like... Come on, friend, we're going to have a little talk. Now, look at me. Come Take on. it easy. You ain't done nothing. Oh, no. Just hawked a mink coat for $1,000. Well, that's what it says here on the pawn ticket. One mink coat. Oh, here's no doubt. Well, it's a cold All night. All right, so what? So I did so what? Sure, it's here, but I've done it before. She don't mind. I always get a winner the next day. Brings me luck, that's all. Raise a little quick cash. She don't mind. If you're talking about your wife, what do you mean? That she's too dead now to mind? Cut it out, I said. She and me were just friends, God rest her soul. So stop looking at me that way. I didn't kill her with the boss. Ain't it so, Jake? This was your call platonic, that's all. Picking the guy who gave her the mink, not me. Sure, go up to Emmettsville. Big shot salesman, he's the one. Vic Burnett. Yeah, ask Vic Burnett. What do you know? Mr. Burnett goes around giving out mink coats to little married girls. You know, somehow he didn't impress me as being that generous. Anyway, while George Valentine is working that tip over, let's you and I work this one over. Back to George Valentine. Vic Burnett, the big man from Emmettsville, here in town for a convention. He wanted you to help one of his employees, the young clerk, Lawrence Ferguson. Because Lawrence was locked up in jail for murder. Too confused even to defend himself. The only trouble is, though, the girl Lawrence said that he met for the first time last night, the night of her murder, now seems to have been mixed up with Vic Burnett himself. So, if your name is George Valentine, you're pretty much inclined to agree with Claire Brooks when she says... I never did like his looks, George, from the day he sold us this wire machine. I didn't like the kind of stories he told. Oh, sure, was... sure, Brooksy, but don't break the recorder on account of him. You get the rest of my notes on it? Oh, didn't you finish? I'll hook it up on the phone again. No, no, that's all. Barnett didn't tell you where he was going after he left the county jail, did he? No. Huh. How do you like that? Write up your notes for a client that doesn't even... Well, we can't find him either, Brooksy. Salesman must have sold himself a powder and then taken it. Mr. Valentine, now you're just getting my boss in trouble. He wouldn't have done a thing like that. Kid, you want to save your job or your neck? I don't know. I'm all confused. 
I don't feel very good. This place just reminds me... Lawrence, we brought you here to her apartment to see what else you could remember. Well, I'm not helping any. I know I'm not helping any, but if you just leave him out of it... Burnett's in this up to his ears. Now, for the last time, relax. Forget what a sucker you've been and think. I'm trying, Lieutenant. That's the couch I woke up on. I know that. Wash the glasses. Did you? No, I don't think so. Must have been drugged. Clean glasses. But liquor stains on the table and floor. I came up here to have a cup of coffee, I know, but... Kid, that husband, Loopy. You saw him in the bar when you met her. Didn't you see him up here, too, later on? Sure you did, didn't you? I didn't see anybody here except her. Oh, for the love... Okay, Rube, wait for us here. And by the way, there's a sergeant outside the other door. Well, going to get around to me now, huh? Just wanted to give you time to make your story good, Loopy. I know you guys. I'll give you keep me cool and I'll get hotter, hey? Well, let me tell you, I'm just a husband, see? But we're divorced. I'm not surprised. She was a businesswoman. A little sharp around the edges, maybe, but standing a guy like you is a horse of another Incompatible, color. Incompatible, that's all. Just one of them things. Give the little lady your happiness, I said, but still play tonic. Soft spot for old Loopy. You know how it is. Which brings me to the mink coat. A little matter which was over and done with yesterday afternoon. A little loan of the mink so Loopy could pick the horse of the right color. If you don't mind my lifting your figures of speech. Just saw her for a minute and met Bob, but I never came up here later on. Vic Burnett gave her the coat, huh? Yes, sir, but you see... When? Last year. How long's he known her? Oh, several years, maybe. Fancy apartment. Her typing service didn't buy her all this. It's how she met him. Special work on his district records or something. He's down here a lot. And she used to write to his office when he wasn't. Boyfriend, that's all. It's perfectly legal. In love with business. <laughs> and he paid her in mink. All yeah. right, so she knew a few things about him. So she had a liking for the finer things. Now you're warming up, friend. She blackmailed him, huh? She did not. You can't talk that way about my wife, God rest her soul. A shakedown artist. So that's what you are. I didn't say that. Oh, stop it. Huh? Well, look what's here. You see, I wasn't running any place. Just dodging a little. I know, Mr. Burnett. I guess you don't need me anymore, so I guess I'll just... Oh, no, you don't, Luby. Stick around. Okay, okay. Listen to me. I want you guys to understand something. I hired you, Valentine. Don't forget that. Yeah, to rescue a guy so dumb he walked into the oldest frame-up in history. So old, no matter what he said, no jury would ever convict him. But that doesn't mean you couldn't be the man behind the frame, does it? Sure, he must be. Listen, I said, I would have told you everything, but you know how it is. When did you see her the last time? Last night, supper. Go on, make something out of that. There you see, supper. He's all at supper. How was she dressed? Huh? Well, I, I don't remember very nicely. Was she wearing a mink coat at supper or wasn't she? Sure. The one I gave her. Why? Grab that guy. Lloyd! Oh, no, you don't! I'm no Come sucker! Back Grab him, Sergeant! Grab him! He's the one! He did it! Get him! He got away, George? Oh, yeah, sure. Of course he got away, Brooksy. Johnson and Burnett after him like a couple of overfed bloodhounds. The kid's here with me. Oh, well, why didn't you go with I wanted the... you to read me back some notes, that's all. You see, the closet's been all torn up, ransacked. So it had to be Loopy who got the coat, we know that. But he didn't get it until after supper. So he was up here late, probably after he'd been in that bar. George, he saw his wife with Lawrence, so it would have been easy for him to follow them up there and... Yeah, yeah, sure, it was... George? Yeah, I'm right here. Uh, look, I'll, uh... I'll be back up to listen to those notes myself instead, okay? Well, I'm just typing. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be up at the office. Let Johnson look for people. I'm all through. Wait for me. Notes for Burnett. Interviewed Lawrence Ferguson in jail. Has stack of circumstantial evidence against him, including the fact that he was caught oh, running George, the scene of crime. I'm just getting started. The I'm... only trouble is... Oh. Hello, ma'am. I, I heard that voice and thought it was Mr. Valentine. Oh, I thought you were. You're Lawrence Ferguson, aren't you? <laughs> That's right. Do you mind if I sit down to wait for him? How'd you know? Hmm? No, no, sit down. 
he described you, I guess. Oh? I was all dressed up last night. I don't look like much anymore. Oh, don't be silly. It's... I thought George was with you. I can't afford to buy the kind of clothes a salesman do. They're jerks. You know that? Every Where sing- is George? Oh, I don't know. He was on the phone. I, I, I was waiting for him. Then he hung up and took off like lightning. Thought maybe he'd come over here. Go on with your work. I'll, I'll just sit here and, and wait. Well, thank you. Only trouble is, a matter of a mink coat. Loopy, Sally Fife's divorce, no good husband, Hawkins. Oh, no, Mr. For Valentine didn't know yet, I guess. Loopy got the coat last All night. The angle That's what there made... is. With a man who committed murder, maybe even with a coat as motive, Hockett, seems to me he'd be a lot more likely to sell it. Mr. Valentine's a smart man, isn't he? At the time Loopy hocked the coat, today, he didn't even know his wife was dead. I'm sort of like Mr. Valentine in some ways. Smart. Where is George? Tell me. If he left to come here and you were with him, he'd be here by now. I don't know. I'm waiting. Just like you are. Yeah. You said the closet at Sally's apartment was all ransacked. Loopy wouldn't do that, would he? He'd know where the coat was. Maybe he already got it. You mean, while you were in that bar... With his wife. Maybe. She wasn't wearing it. How did you know she even had a mink coat? I don't know, ma'am. I'm all mixed up. Yes. Play some more. That machine, the salesman sell. <laughs> the big shots, the jerks. They even got a song. Salesman of all F-O-E, we will have prosperity. <laughs> Isn't that a laugh? Like a bunch of high school kids in a football game. I see what goes on. I can make more money than any of them. Lawrence, stop. Stop. I'll, I'll, I'll play it if you want. Sell it. Also, Mr. Burnett, it bothers me you'd hire me and still keep things secret. But you did hire me, so answer a few questions. Your correspondence up there in Emmetsville... Sally Fife did business with you, so whoever handles your correspondence would know about her. Check? And that's your clerk, Lawrence. He would have known about her through the handling of district records, too. But he insists he didn't even know her name until last night. Why? (laughs) You killed her. The poor innocent boy being framed. You killed her. Mr. Valentine's smart. You're stupid. You killed her and ran, but you got caught. Don't say that! That's what she said. I'm sorry. They were sorry for me. They thought I'd been framed because I made it look that way. I spilled liquor on the rug and the table. I pretended. I used to give Sally information about Mr. Barnett. And then she'd get mink coats and things. I don't care. I don't want to know. She wouldn't give me my share. She said I was stupid the same thing you said. Don't! Don't touch me! Why not? I have to kill you? Get away! Sally couldn't give me my share. But I got even with her. And even if they caught me, I still made it look like I'd been framed. I looked for the coat, but it was gone. Get away, I said. But he still got away. Stop it! You stop it! I wasn't framed! They thought I'd been framed because I made it look that way. I spilled liquor on the rug and the table. I pretended. I used to give Sally information about Mr. You did that. She'd get me coats and things. Listen. Here, I don't want to know. You turn that thing and try to record what I say. You think, stupid. The same thing you you think you've got a confession, don't you? Why's the button on this crazy thing? I didn't know. No, I didn't. You bumped it yourself. I you what kind of a proof I am. And so, Mr. Burnett, I guess you don't need a report. The kid you wanted me to help is nothing but a pin-brained loony. Where's the button? Turn it off. Oh, yes, it will, Buster. Oh, George, you're here. I'll show you the button. was a close call for Brooksy. I wasn't sure there for a minute whether or not George was going to make it in time. Now, while he's quieting Brooksy down, let's take a minute to listen to this. Oh, 
George. Now, hey, hey, Angel, cut it out. It's all over. He didn't hurt you. But I didn't know where you were. I thought he'd done something to you. Well, back when I was telephoning, he was outside with a cop. He slugged him and ran. But I told you I was coming right over. George, why didn't you say what had happened? Why didn't Look, you... Now, take it easy, Angel. I didn't want to scare you. I wasn't positive he was headed here, and besides, I came as fast as I could. But you must have got here a long time ago. You must have been standing outside and Angel, listening. Angel, it's all over, I, I said. I know you needed real evidence against him. Or I wouldn't have George. let him hurt you, Angel. Come on, let's go. You didn't do that on purpose, did you? I mean, not warn me and then let Brooksy, that... Brooksy, what kind of a guy do you think... Well, it just happened that way. Oh, look, darling, come here. There. I convince you? No. I don't believe you. Oh, f- oh, but don't stop trying to convince me. If at first you don't succeed. You have just heard The Man Behind the Frame, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey was starred as George Valentine with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Now this is yours truly inviting you to another visit with Valentine when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it. (laughs) 